coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello and welcome to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. Thanks for listening. Today you're listening to one of 15 episodes that I recorded with my wife, Rhea Story. So you'll be hearing both of us speak together. And we're speaking to you about a, a book that we actually wrote together called Change Happens, Leading Yourself and Others Through Change. And it's based on uh, a lot of principles that, that we learned along the way. And we'll share some personal stories, some things that are not in the book. But as you listen to this, if you enjoy listening to Rhea, and I'm pretty sure you will, make sure you check out her podcast, which you can find on your favorite app by searching for her name, Rhea, R-I-A, Story, S-T-O-R-Y. And uh, also, she's, she's all over LinkedIn. She puts out a lot of content. She's got a lot of books on leadership development and personal growth. So be sure to check out Rhea. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode on Change Happens, Leading Yourself and Others Through Change. Mac and I are excited to be doing this series, and this is number 14 of 15 episodes. So we, Mac, we're, we're really getting close to the end of the book here. Can you believe it? Yeah, we've been working at it. Hopefully, hopefully everybody's been enjoying it. We've had a little bit of feedback from people, but uh, we never know when, when people are going to listen to this. One reason we want to do this series is when we talk about change, we can tell people, hey, go out to our podcast and, and got a whole entire 15-part series on it. Yeah. So today's chapter and episode really is about becoming a change champion. And I think, you know, we've, we've talked so much about the principles related to leading yourself and others through change, but, but really kind of now we get down to the the really good stuff right and because when we learn to be that change champion it really is taking our leadership and influence to an entirely new level so i wanted to drill down in that um one of the quotes i, I laugh when i when i read this quote but one of the quotes um that we share in this in the book in this section is from john wooden and he says failure is not fatal but failure to change might be right mm. <laughs> Failure to change might be fatal. And, um, you know, I, I think of so many organizations throughout just our recent, you know, cultural society and history of so many organizations that refused to adapt or refused to take on new technology or refused to try something or innovate something. And they're out of business, you know, because if you're not going to be willing to change, you can't stick around long term because things are things are changing. So just think of this year of how many um, brick and mortar businesses have had to learn to adapt to new ways of doing business with the, all the pandemic precautions and people not going out and shopping and, you know, those who are quicker to embrace online options or curbside pickup or things like that are the ones that are more successful long term because you've got to be willing to adapt and change. So, um, so I want to talk about seven ways to grow your influence in order to become a change champion. And the first one, the very first one, is do more than expected. Go above and beyond, whether it's at work or at home. One, I mean, number one most powerful thing about increasing your influence to be a change champion: do more than expected. And um, for me, I think of times in my career that I've tried to embrace this. And what I like to say is go the extra inch, right? You often heard about going the extra mile, going the second mile with somebody. Forget the second mile because <laughs> most people aren't going the second mile or the third mile. If you just go the extra inch with people, but if you do that consistently, you're increasing your influence. And I remember sitting in a meeting with another director um, when I was back when I was working at the hospital. And I forget what the meeting was about or what we were talking about, but but this other director mentioned that she had asked me to look up some of the regulations around whatever it is that was changing in our world at the time. 
And that was part of my role and responsibility is someone would say, hey, go find me the, the state or federal or the Medicare regulations on, you know, new ways to build x-rays or something. And so part of my responsibility was to just go out there and search the internet and dig into all the possible government authorities and regulations and compliance regs and billing insurance and all that and figure out, number one, what was changing and how we could do it. Because my job was to make sure that we stayed compliant. And uh, if you don't stay compliant, you, you face severe um, financial penalties, monetary penalties, or civil penalties even. So part of my job was to keep us out of jail, right? And, and help us not lose money in the process. And you know, you know me, Mac, I'm, I can be detail oriented. But it's not my it's not my favorite thing. Like you probably don't want me to paint your living room because you know it's just like eighty percent, ninety percent, and I'm good most of the time. Let me help the folks listen. The reason is she may forget to do an entire wall. No, 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 it's not that bad. It really oh, is not. Okay, maybe just to do the trim. But it's just you know <laughs> when I'm cooking, I don't really measure stuff. I just kind of put it in there and it comes out okay. You know, it's just my, my personality. Now I can focus on details. And in that role, I did have to just really make myself focus on details because one little missed detail could get us in a lot of trouble. So I just had to really, really focus on that in myself and say, okay, now I have to buckle down and think of every possible thing. And hopefully I was, um, was good at that. But but what I quickly realized was not, you know, just sending the information to someone when they had a request. I mean, that's important, right? Finding the information, making sure it's accurate and complete, that's important. But how I sent it to them would often determine, did I increase my influence with them? Because, you know, a lot of my job was to interpret it, put it into plain English, and less than 3,000 words, hopefully, so that they could get just a quick answer, a quick snapshot, right? They didn't need to go dig and research and do all that. That was supposed to be my role. And so what I realized was that the easier I could make that for somebody who was looking up a new regulation, the quicker my influence would increase. And so I was sitting in this meeting with this other director, and she commented she had asked me to to look up something and I had and she said and you know Rhea just got it to me really quickly like that afternoon and she said she sent me the links and she sent me the <laughs> summary and she even told me what page number on the pdf it was on you know and that was a big deal for her and you know it was a compliment that she was sharing that with others but it really hit home with me that it didn't take me any extra time to mark down what page number what she needed was on, right? And she probably didn't even really need to go look at it herself because I summarized it. Because you and had already done the work. I'd done you had the, to work. Do the work. You right. had to do I had the to work do the work anyway. That that's what she needed. Yep. All you did was basically record the work that you'd done so she wouldn't have to duplicate your time and effort digging through something you've already dug through. Yeah. Yeah. Just that little thing of putting a page number on 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 the email, right? And gave saved her some time if she needed to go look. I don't even know if she did, but but my point being here, do more than expected. Go above and beyond because people remember that. I, I always say it's easy to stand out if you want to be exceptional. Do more than is expected. I love um, one of my favorite quotes from our friend Amir Ganad. He says, if you want a, if you want a six figure business and he's really talking about if you're an entrepreneur or, you know, a have a customer based business. If you want a six figure business or a six figure salary, you provide seven figure service. That's some good stuff. Amir, Amir nailed that one. He did. He did. If you want a six figure business or a six figure salary, you provide seven figure service. He's saying People over deliver. That. Absolutely. More than expected. And then that brings us to number two, do it before it's required, right? If you know something needs to be done, just just do it. Don't wait to be asked. Don't wait to be voluntold or delegated to, right? <laughs> Take the initiative like we talked about in the last chapter. Be the first person to step out because people remember the first person to, to step out and to do that. People who volunteer and, and kind of embrace that and, and do it before it's required stand out uh, as a leader and that increased 
increases your influence. Look around for things that need to be done and do it before you have to, right? Just, just take it on. Yeah, these things you're talking about, when we talk about becoming a change champion, I mean, my little piece of, of the journey to becoming a lean uh, coordinator, then a lean manager, and that now leadership development speaker and author and trainer, all this stuff we're doing now. But it started out, I shared that story a few episodes back. It started out when I held my hand up and said, I'll take over this sale that was not performing well. I mean, I was basically uh, you know, taking the responsibility, taking an initiative but I was just doing it in my personal space, right? I, I just wanted to do it because I wanted to improve the process. Kind of for me, the, the company benefited, but I learned a lot during that process. And then later when it was time to become uh, the lean coordinator, no one in the plant wanted to do that. All the managers were asked to do it. None of them wanted to take on that additional responsibility. And I raised my hand and said, Hey, I'll do it. I didn't even know how to do it, but I was taking responsibility and, and so I went and learned how to do it. So then I had to influence not only myself to change, but an entire plant full of people, a couple hundred people. And then the next thing is I stepped out, took responsibility for, for initiating change in my life, as we talked about last, last chapter, and started my own lean consulting business. But as I became a, a, a change champion, I kept doing it at a higher level and a higher level and a higher level. And now... And now we're speaking on leadership development and personal growth all around the country. Now we're leading the leaders at the highest level to help them transform their own organizations. So it's just, it's been a constant journey of growth, but it's everything we're talking about in this book. We've, we've lived it. We've applied it real. Mm. You know, that brings us to number three um, that you're, that you're talking about. We've lived and applied it. Number three is be confident and humble. And you and I talk about there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. It's humility, right? Mm. Confidence as a leader, as an individual is important. But when we cross that line without humility into arrogance, we start decreasing our influence with those around us. And a large part of that, particularly when change is going on, is number one, don't be, you know, don't be afraid to, to speak up if you know the answer to a question. But if you don't know the answer to a question, don't be afraid to say, hey, I don't know. Don't be afraid to admit if you don't know something. It's okay to say, hey, let me find out. Let me figure this out. But that's a, you know, that's a big difference between confidence and, and arrogance. And it leads right into number four. Absolutely. Number four is admit any mistakes. We all make mistakes. Admit them. And apologize when you need to. Very sincerely, of course. But correct your mistake and move on. Because our influence doesn't come from being perfect, right? Everybody else already knows we're perfect and we're not perfect. They just don't know if we know it. And we don't, they don't know if we know that they know that we're not perfect, right? But our influence comes from being able to say, hey, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but I'm willing to work to overcome them, right? We're all human. We all make mistakes and it's just part of it. But when we're willing to own those, embrace those and correct those, that's when we increase our influence. And I guarantee you, you know, we've probably all had the experience of maybe at a restaurant being served the wrong thing or getting they got the order wrong or they cooked your steak wrong or, or something like that right but a lot of times i guarantee you your perception and your experience of that is influenced by how the server or the manager or whoever you brought the, the mistakes attention to how they responded did they take ownership oh i'm so sorry we messed up let me go fix it let me go get the kitchen right now to get you a new order or do they say, well, you didn't tell us you wanted it medium instead of medium, you know, right? If they just try to act like it's your fault, then your experience is negatively influenced and you might not want to go back versus any mistake that's made. If that organization, Chick-fil-A comes to mind, it's rare that they mess something up, but when they do, boy, they take ownership of it. And that's one of the reasons they have such a great, you know, reputation because people know they do make mistakes, but they own them and admit them and correct them. Yeah, and high impact leaders, uh, you know, change champions, they they take uh, the blame for other people's mistakes because that's what makes them a, a change champion. They're able to do that. Not only do they only 
do they admit their own mistakes? Because you, you got to understand we're talking about change. And when change happens, there's going to be a ton of mistakes. You don't go through endless change, which basically is life, w- without mistakes. But when you're going in and you're changing a process or transforming the culture, which is like a high level of, of, of change, the, the way we actually interact with each other, the way we interact with our customers, with our, our peers, with our boss, there's going to be a lot of a lot of mistakes. And that's when Rio was talking about being humble. That leads into, you know, admitting mistakes. It takes humility to admit the mistake. But a lot of times as leaders, so when someone else, I remember leading, you know, all these lead, lean manufacturing process improvement teams and someone on the team would make the mistake. But I'd, I'd take the blame. When the big bosses found out, I'd say, hey, I was leading the team. It was me. They're not going to fire me. I'm not. I'm the, I'm the consultant. It wasn't a big deal, but just go ahead and remove that pressure off of the team members so that they can carry on with the task. But mm. you got to admit mistakes. And sometimes it's admitting someone else's mistakes was your responsibility. Mm, that's important, especially from a leadership perspective. Absolutely. So number five, volunteer to help others. Those who have a heart for serving in some way will influence far beyond those who expect to be served. Right. It, when we expect others to serve us, that's not increasing our influence with them. It never is. When we come into it with a, a service attitude or just a willingness to help remove barriers or volunteer to help someone, that increases our influence exponentially. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, when you're saying that volunteer to, to help others, you know, you know, seven ways to grow your influence. Uh, in order to become a change champion. When you were reading that, I was thinking about what we did back in 2011. I think it was years ago by so far now. I can't think back. But when we, when you and I started the uh, mountain bike chapter uh, camp, Central Alabama Mountain Peddlers, I was the founding president. You were the founding secretary. And we started that from scratch. A lot of the things we're talking about in this book, we were actually doing it. But right there, number five, volunteer to to help others. That's really what we were doing. Everybody was volunteering. We were trying to assemble a team of volunteers to volunteer, to go out and do a lot of physical labor at the state park. That was kind of basically was no one went there. Hardly. It was basically not making very much profit, not getting very much traffic. And it was a few miles down the road from us. I mean, we would drive an hour to go mountain bike or go to a park, but we wouldn't go two miles down the road to, to our own park. So we started that and, from the very beginning, we started and attracted 150 people to that. And we basically helped lead the, the team, the organization to build 15 miles of mountain bike trail by hand within like six months from scratch. And, and the park over the, the following years, the park increased their revenue profit by about four times. The, the local team, Auburn, Auburn University, not Auburn University, Auburn High School in Auburn, Alabama, uh, because of the things we did and other people did, we, we, we were able to start mountain biking as a sport, not, not us literally, I'm saying we, as the state of Alabama and the people who are leading mountain biking as a sport in high school, kicked that off. And it wasn't very long before the Auburn high school team had won the state championship in mountain biking. And, and, and all that came not just from us wanting to volunteer. We were important pieces, but we were not the only piece. There was a lot more people who did a whole lot more stuff than we did but every single person was volunteering to become a, a change champion. I mean, that's what made us so successful with that, with that organization was we had a lot of change champions and they all had their specialties. We had people doing websites. We had folks doing illegal stuff. We had folks working with, with the state park and you, you, we had you doing all kind of, uh, accounting type stuff as the treasurer. And you did a lot of legal stuff too, with, uh, getting grants and that sort of stuff. But relative, we, tr- we transformed that part. We assembled a team of change champions. Yeah, and that kind of brings us to number six, take more responsibility, right? When you take responsibility for something, you own the situation. And I think we touched on that a little bit already. But asking how you can do something allows you to think through the solution instead of asking if you can do something, right? Those are little words, but they have a big significance. And you and I talk about that. 
don't ask if you can do something because that allows room for doubt. If I say, can we do this? If, if, that's a big possibility, right? Little word, big possibility. Can we do something assumes that the answer might be no. And if we say, how can we do something? That assumes the answer is yes. We just have to figure out how to get there. And that's a big mindset shift. It's a big perspective shift. It's a big mental energy shift and just saying, oh, let's focus our efforts on figuring it out rather than let's figure out if we can do it or not, right? You, look, you cut a whole step out of the process right there. <laughs> and then number seven, accept less credit and more blame. Mm. Ex accept more of the blame when things go wrong and accept less of the credit when things go right. That's, that's key. That's key to increasing your influence as a change champion. Because if you want to be the kind of change champion that runs around taking credit for all the changes, all the good changes, and, and blaming others for all the bad changes, you're not going to be a, a change champion. There's not <laughs> going to be no one following you. And there's going to be a, a whole lot of people hating you. And so you're never going to become the, the change champion. So you got to remember the context of what we're talking about. Accepting less credit and more blame is going to increase your influence at a super high level. With, with everyone throughout the entire organization. Bob Chapman says this. He says, leadership education is not reserved for people with titles. We focus on people who want to take the next step in their leadership journey, no matter what their official title or role is. And that's a high impact leader right there talking about how you grow and develop people. A lot of organizations, they just grow and develop the formal authority leaders. The high impact organizations, they grow and develop everybody if a top leader is not interested they let them be not interested they don't force the top leader to come get engaged but that top leader is going to be left behind by everyone else who is engaged they're going to cause themselves to become irrelevant because no one can make you irrelevant except yourself and so it, it applies to leaders but high impact leaders know that hmm yeah, you know, it, uh, you say something along the line, and you've you said it much better than I can remember at this point, but something about if you're not growing, you're slowing, right? But it's also if we're not growing and we're slowing, somebody else is willing to grow. Somebody else out there is going to be hungry. And so recognizing that, you know, not because anybody's better than anyone else, but recognizing that we all have more to contribute when we're willing to develop ourselves, develop our influence, embrace change and apply these principles. And, you know, overall the team or the organization wins and then we as individuals win. It's a win, win, win all the way, all the way around. So last thoughts uh, on this episode. Yeah, I just want to, uh, share a quote from Simon Sinek. He says, leadership is not a license to do less. It is a responsibility to do more. And again, when we're talking about becoming a change champion, you're, you're doing all the things that we've taught you in this book, the good things, you know, resisting change. You're not resisting change, but what you are doing as a change champion is you're eliminating the resistance to change. You're growing and developing people and building relationships and helping them grow. But like Rhea said, you know, if you're not growing, you're slowing. And I'm going to tell you this, if if, if if you're not growing, you can expect to be left behind by those who are. There's mm. there's plenty of people who are growing. Again, that's that's why I read every day, and Rhea reads constantly. She reads more than I do, and uh, it's because we want to be intentionally growing. Uh, Joshua Incarnacion, he he said this. He says we need to change the way we believe in people. We need to move beyond trust, faith, and confidence. We need to shift to encouragement empowerment and engagement mm, so i just want to i want to share a few things that, that i wrote in the book just three short sentences basically but encouraging others i want to talk about those those three things that joshua mentioned you know reading that from him inspired me to to write what i'm about to write but encouraging others or what i'm about to say not right i'm not writing here on the podcast Encouraging others when change happens communicates things are going to get better. Encouragement communicates you believe they can make the necessary adjustments and they have the ability to deal with the changes going on around them. That's what change champions do. What else do they do? They understand this. Empowering others when change happens gives them a voice regarding the changes and shows your belief in their ability to identify and solve problems. 
empowering others allows them to become responsible for implementing the change. So true change champions are trying to grow and develop future change champions. And they also understand engaging others when change happens gets them involved with the process, transfers the responsibility for results to them, and allows them to make a bigger difference. Mm. It's powerful. Powerful stuff. But again, only powerful when we apply it. Knowledge yep. alone isn't enough. Yep. You want to cover this last thought from Amir? You talked about Amir a minute ago. This is a great quote one of us could share with him. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I really like the, the wisdom here. It says, change starts with what is and attempts to keep what is working intact and eliminate what is not. Transformation simply starts with nothing and is led by a vision of the whole as if it were created from scratch today. The former views today as an extension of yesterday and tries to make the most of what is. The latter sees today as the beginning of tomorrow and shapes today's circumstances as a solid foundation for what will be. Yeah, that, that's some good stuff. So when we're talking about change, you know, we've done this series on it. We're talking about transformation. I've got previous series on my podcast about the 10 foundational elements of intentional transformation, how to become your best self, which is all about personal transformation. And I've got uh, the series on my book, Blue Collar Leadership and Culture the five components for building high performance teams, which is, it's all about uh, transforming the organization. So all, all of every, every book that Rhea and I write, talk about every podcast we do, every article we write, it's all about helping the organizations and people change. And if they want to take it to the high level, it's about transformation. Yeah, absolutely. Powerful right. stuff. Well, next week we'll be wrapping up the last um, episode in this series. We'll be talking about the courage to change. All right. Talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Connor Leadership Series books and others now available on audio along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon iTunes, and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, certifications, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.